The pKa of acetic acid is 4.7, but not all carboxylic acids have that 4.7 pKa. The actual acid strength is dependent on what that R group is. Think about this with me for a minute. If we change that R group so that it helps stabilize the carboxylate, so we're forming a more stable conjugate base, then it's easier to make. When it's easier to make, that equilibrium shifts to the right. And shifting to the right is our definition of a stronger acid. We make more of the H3O+. So as we analyze carboxylic acids to determine their relative acid strengths, if we can determine what the effect of R will be on stabilizing the anion in that carboxylate conjugate base, we'll be able to tell whether the acid is stronger or weaker. Generally, that's pretty easy to do. Take a look. We'll compare everything to acetic acid, which has a pKa of 4.7. As we add substituents that are electron withdrawing, those substituents help accommodate the negative charge. They're pulling negative charge toward them, placing a partial positive charge near the negative charge. And for that reason, the pKa's are smaller, the acids are stronger. Fluorine is more electronegative than chlorine, so it pulls harder, and the acid is a bit stronger. If you look at an even better electron withdrawing group, the nitro group, we'll find that the acid is even stronger. So there's a good correlation between the electron pull of the substituents attached to acetic acid and the pKa's, and it's exactly what we would predict. It's interesting that very few substituents make the acids weaker, increasing the pKa. But putting an alkyl group on does have a small effect. When we've added a methyl, we get 0.2 pKa units higher. It's a little weaker acid. Carbonyl groups have an effect. When we put an acyl group on, we see that this pKa puts it more acidic than acetic acid, but not quite as acidic as chloroacetic acid. And when we add a carboxyl group, which has the carbonyl and the hydroxyl, it has a bigger effect. And now we have a carboxylic acid that's more acidic than chloroacetic acid. So an electron donating group, methyl, makes the acid a little weaker. Most substituents are electron withdrawing, and the more electron withdrawing they are, the stronger the acid is. If you add multiple substituents, the effect increases, as you might predict. Take a look. Again, showing the pKa values, one chlorine, Chloroacetic acid has a pKa of 2.9. When we add 2, it goes to 1.3. And when we have three chlorine groups, it goes to 0 0.9. This is a strong acid. The fluorine is a more electronegative substituent than chlorine. And trifluoroacetic acid is even stronger than trichloroacetic acid. By the way, trifluoroacetic acid has an important biological application. It's a strong organic acid that's used in the synthesis of peptides. The aromatic ring helps disperse negative charge, and so benzoic acid is stronger than acetic acid. When we attach an electronegative substituent to the ring, it makes the acid even stronger, as you would expect. The electron withdrawing effect of fluorine in the ortho position is stronger than fluorine in the meta position. And when you put fluorine in the para position, it has an even smaller effect. Parafluorobenzoic acid is only slightly stronger than benzoic acid itself. And as you would predict, if the substituent on the ring is even more electron withdrawing than fluorine, the acid will be stronger. Orthonitrobenzoic acid is significantly stronger than orthofluorobenzoic acid. So after we looked at a lot of these data, we can return to our original thinking. Electron withdrawing the substituents that make this carboxylate anion, the conjugate base of the acid, more stable, make it more easier to form. So the equilibrium is shifted to the right, that makes a stronger acid.